In this morning's Breakfast Bible Bites, we will look into the revealed truths found in Psalm 58. This psalm is another of the imprecatory prayers of condemnation against an enemy. It speaks of both the rebellious enemy of David and prophetically of God's future curse that will bring judgment upon the enemies of God. The psalmist foresees the judgment executed and righteousness rewarded. Verse 1 of Psalm 58 reads, Do you indeed speak righteousness, O gods? Do you judge uprightly, O sons of men? Joseph Addison Alexander remarks about the difficulty in the contextual translation of this verse and suggests that a better understanding may be improved by rendering Ael, which means mighty, uh, thus reducing its stature as implied when writing the title of God with a small letter G. The word used here for God, Ael, may be made more and more comprehensive. It is translated as mighty men, Elim. As in the Holman Christian Standard Bible, the passage is therefore rendered, Do you really speak righteously, you mighty ones? Do you judge people fairly? Perhaps this is a good passage for our modern-day judges. Although they are mighty in their power to administer justice, perhaps they pay too little attention to the one to whom they must also give an answer. For there is coming a day when they will have to give an answer for their own unbiased application of righteous judgment. David's enemies are united behind a cause. That's called groupthink, mob rule. Perhaps mindlessly, they are grouped in unanimity as they embrace the verdict presented without question. Together they unanimously condemned God's ordained king, David. Even if some of those who encircled Saul were not willing to go against this, Saul's main uh, support group and perhaps held their tongues rather than participate in the slander, take heart, take this to heart, silence equals consent. And the person who refrains from defending the righteous becomes an accomplice and is just as guilty in supporting the injustice that is being done. The principle translated in modern legal scenario is as the getaway driver is just as guilty as those who personally robbed the bank. In God's eyes, I believe our Bible teaches that we must not be silent in condemning those who will trash the godly principles upon which these United States of America were founded. The U.S. Declaration of Independence states that God himself bestowed our rights and liberties upon us. It reads, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their powers from the consent of the governed. God alone is the one that everyone must give an answer to, even those who are mighty in influence and power. We read back in Psalm 19, verses 1 through 4, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims the work of his hands. Day after day they pour out speech. Night after night they communicate knowledge. There is no speech, there are no words, their voice is not heard. The message has gone out to all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has pitched a tent for the sun. There is no speech nor language where his celestial voice is not understood. Every man may distinguish his voice in the stars. Between the mighty languages of the terrestrials to his visual presence in the celestials, he speaks with one language that may be understood by every willing heart and mind, even to the lowest heathen. They are all without excuse. A person that is so self-indulgent must choose not to conclude that the sun, moon, and stars are God's traveling preachers. They are apostles upon their missionary journey, confirming that these are the work of an intelligent designer who is both our creator and maker.